It's another edition of Time About the Movies, and today we're looking at the films of February 3rd, 1995. Five movies to look at, so let's just jump right on into it. We'll start off with the biggest new release of the weekend, and that is Whoopi Goldberg, Drew Barrymore, and Mary Louise Parker starring in the dramedy Boys on the Side. What do you think? I think it's work. Look. I'm sure there's somebody out there who wants to go cross country with the whitest woman on the face of the earth, singing carpenter songs and reliving childhood memories, but it ain't me. Hey! That's my call! Why has it been easy for Jay? Get out of the car! Man, I've always been a mystery to Robin. I'm the one who spent three years in happy hour and never went home with anybody except the bartender. Hey, babe. And Holly falls in love every day. Is it me, or is she working her way down some weird list of guys who call women they? They had nothing in common. I'm not going over Cliff for you two, so just forget it. But an appetite for living and their need for a home. I'm eight weeks pregnant. Please tell me you're kidding. Well, it's, it's nice. This has got to be the mother. Three women who put an end to secrecy. Jane's been so great to me. At first, I thought she just liked me because of the whole gay thing. Jane's gay. Like, hello. <laughs> she's a black lesbian, and she's living here. And create a world of intimacy. I don't know what it is, but there's something that goes on between women. Whoopi Colbert, Mary Louise Parker, and Drew Barrymore. A story of loyalty and trust, safety in numbers, women on top, and boys on the side. It's funny that they bring up Thelma and Louise and Fried Green Tomatoes because you would so honestly think that this is another one of those type of films. This is a film that somebody tried to cash in on the success of those movies. And while there are definitely a lot of elements of both of those movies in here, the movie overall is actually kind of fun. It's actually kind of an enjoyable film. It is an origin a more original film than you would think. It's a film that mostly works because of these ke the chemistry between the three women here. Will be Goldberg, Mary Louise Parker, Drew Barrymore. You really like seeing them together, and you really like seeing them go on this adventure together. And it's an overall enjoyable film. I was actually very surprised by this movie because I'd heard about it for the longest time. I never really wanted to see it because I didn't think it was going to be anything all that interesting or engaging. But, um, yeah, I was honestly surprised by it. I was actually really surprised by what I saw here. It's directed, the last film directed by Herbert Ross, who did uh, Footloose, Pennies from Heaven, Steel Magnolias, uh, My Blue Heaven, True Colors, a lot of movies we've talked about on this show. And um, it is a pretty enjoyable film. It's an enjoyable movie that works mostly because of the, the the late actresses. They work off each other very well. Pretty good supporting cast, too. You've got Matthew McConaughey in here, who plays a guy named Abe Lincoln, which I think is kind of amusing. Uh, James Romare, Anita Gillette, Estelle Parsons. Um, just an overall solid cast all around here. And it is a very enjoyable film. The emotional moments people earn. There's never any real serious, melodramatic, over-the-top moments in here. Everything feels genuine. It's a very nicely made film. It's a, it's a real little surprise. I did not really expect a whole lot going into it, but I'm glad I saw it. It's not one I'd probably watch over and over again, but it is an enjoyable film. I'd say definitely check it out if you really have a good mindset to it. You can definitely find a lot of enjoyment in it. So uh, That's Boys on the Side. Let's move on to the next movie that we have here, and that is The Jerky Boys, the movie. Caravan Pictures presents the motion picture The Phone Company doesn't want you to see. The Jerky Boys, the movie rated R, starts Friday, February 3rd at a theater near you. Watch this. They're quirky. Oh, my hemorrhoids are killing me. <laughs> they're perky. Oh, silly little freak. And they're jerky. Sizzle? Yeah, that's right, Sizzle Chest. Hey! The Jerky Boys, the movie rated R, starts February 3rd. You know how Disney made the It's Pat movie and it didn't work mostly because it was kind of a one-joke premise and it didn't really amount to a full feature-length film? This movie kind of has the same feeling to it. I mean, the Jerky Boys can be very funny in small increments. When you're trying to make an entire movie focusing on them and the comedy that they're involved in, it doesn't really stick that well. It's not really all that funny. It's not really all that engaging. And despite the best efforts that this movie has... 
this movie's kind of a letdown. I mean, I really went into this movie thinking it was going to be something a little bit more funnier, a little bit more cleverer, or a little bit more satirical, maybe something on the lines of Beavis and Butthead do America, or even something like Dumb and Dumber, where the smart, gu this, the smart guys are really the stupid people involved, while it's the complete opposite the other way. And it doesn't really do that. And it really, like, it, I think my biggest problem with the movie is that the jokes, the jokes really don't work out to a full-length feature film. It felt like a film that was really... It needed a better script, maybe a better a better comedic mind to make this work as a feature-length film, but on the whole, this movie really doesn't work that well. And it's a shame because you got so many talented people involved in the supporting cast. I mean, Alan Arkin's in here, uh, Vincent Pastore, William Hickey, Alan North, Ozzy Osbourne's in here. The talent is there, just the comedy just isn't. It's a film that... I was really let down by I thought this was going to be a whole lot more funnier than it should have been, but really it wasn't. It's a movie that really is a major, major disappointment on so many levels. So uh, That's the Jerky Boys movie, so let's move on to the next movie that we have here, and that is Sam Neill in John Carpenter's version of In the Mouth of Madness. This may honestly be the most underrated movie of John Carpenter's career. I mean, this is a film that did not do very well financially or critically when it came out. It's had this cult following over the years, and I think it needed that cult following to really get people to appreciate what this movie was trying to do. I think this is a very underrated horror film written by Michael DeLuca, who wrote The Mask and actually started his career writing some really bad horror movies like um, uh, Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare, but... Um, this is a really, really damn good movie. I mean, Sam Neill just kills it in this movie. He's incredible in this. He's given a great performance. Great cast overall. Jurgen Prochnow, David Warner, Charlton Heston in here. And the movie just plays with your mind so much. You get so invested in what's going to happen at the end of this movie. This is what a good mystery should do. It just it should keep you on the edge of your seat all throughout the course of the film. That even by the end of it, you really don't know how the, how this is going to turn out But in the end. And when you see what happens, it's just like, whoa, you guys really went there. And it's just like... I don't think it went as much as as harsh as it wanted to go to. I think it I think it meant to go a little bit more crueler and more darker. But for what they had to work with here, it does a pretty good job of keeping you invested throughout the course of the film. It's just it's an it's an insanity test. It's re, it's a legitimate insanity test all the way to the end, and it's just a wonderfully made movie. This is a film that really is ahead of its time. It's a terrific film. Maybe the it, like I said, it's the most underrated movie I think John Carpenter has ever made. He's made a lot of great movies, but just an underrated film. If you haven't seen In the Mouth of Madness, definitely check it out because it is really one of his most underrated films. Uh, so with that said, let's move on to the next movie, and that is The Secret of Rowan Enish. Grandfather! Great to see you. On the northern coast of Ireland. Why did we have to leave? Haven't they told you? Tell me what. There is a secret. Jimmy! The sea that brought me here. Between land and sea, there is a place. There it is. Where myths are real. Rowan Inish? Aye. The Secret of Rowan Inish. It's a wonderful story. A new film by John Sayles, rated BG. 
So the story is basically centered on the Irish and Arcadian folklores of Selkies, seals that could see shed their skins to become human. And the story is basically set on the west coast of Ulster in the northwest of Ireland about a girl named Fiona who is sent to live with her grandparents and her cousin near the island of Rowan Enish. They find that they find that these Selkies are rumored to reside there, and so it's a family legend that her younger brother was swept away in his infancy and raised by a Selkie. And it's basically the movie basically follows that type of a story and um, that's really all I know about it because I've never seen this movie before. I've heard about it. I just never really got around to seeing it. But um, I just got some good reviews to it. So uh, maybe one of those little underrated family films that kind of comes out. Nobody really ever talks about it, but you really got to look for it. And this really has a lot of potential to it. I mean, I see a lot of uh, creative ideas that could be coming from this. Directed by John Sayles, who also did... Uh, we've looked at a couple of his films before. Passion Fish. Uh, we also looked at City of Hope. He also did Eight Men Out. Just a really good underrated director, and I think this is could, this is a film that might be one of his little underrated gems. But like I said, I can't really comment on it too much because I haven't seen it. But um, there's definitely a lot of promise there with this film. So uh, anyway, Secret of Rowan Enish. So let's move on to the last movie that we have here, and that is the documentary Martha and Ethel. Picture that audiences and critics nationwide have fallen in love with. Meet Martha and Ethel. Martha was my mother. <laughs> Martha and Ethel is an intimate film portrait, unlike anything you've ever experienced. It's the story of two unforgettable women, the families they cared for, and the lives they changed forever. I was really at Martha's mercy. She would wake us up in the morning, give us the uh, German uh, bathing treatment. Gene Siskel applauds this remarkable film as fascinating. And Ethel was there to supply us with love, acknowledgement, attention. I felt as if I was part of a white family. USA Today calls it exceptional at night she called me mama sneak previews jeffrey lyons raves martha and ethel is simply beautiful deeply moving the confusing part is should i love my own mother more and a host of reviewers across the country praise this unique motion picture you look good you look good too a smash hit at the prestigious sundance film festival every home should have a martha and ethel on video now exclusively from Columbia TriStar Home Video. So here's another one of those movies. Where, actually, I was about to say it was hard to find this movie on e Wikipedia, but as I'm looking at the Google page for it, it's literally right there, and I completely missed out on it. But um, I haven't seen this movie, so I can't really say too much about it, but I can just run down the plot of it. You can pretty much tell what it is from that trailer there. Uh, it's basically telling the story of two women in their 80s, a German Catholic woman named Martha and an African-American woman named Ethel. They're the former nannies of this director that made the documentary and the co-producer. Uh, it's basically following their background and hiring into New York families. Uh, the children of these two are now grown up. They reflect on how Martha and Ethel played roles in their lives. And there really isn't a whole lot there. For, it's kind of a sub It kind of sounds like a simple documentary, but... It could be a decent documentary. I mean, there was a lot there that could actually work. It's a G-rated documentary, which is something I rarely see with these type of films. But, um, I don't know. could be something there, but nothing really more I can add to it because I haven't seen it. So, at least I know there's a Wikipedia page for it now. Because, when, honestly, when I, had, when I looked for the trailer for that, it's not on YouTube or anything. I had to go to Vimeo to find that trailer right there. And I couldn't even find anything on Wikipedia until just now as I was recording this. So... Anyway, that's all I really have to say about this one, Martha and Ethel. And so on that note, that wraps up another edition of Time About the Movies. Next time we meet, we'll have three new movies, including Adam Sandler's leading film debut, Billy Madison. We also have The Quick and the Dead, and also Shallow Grave. So three movies to look at next time. We'll do that on the next episode. But until then, thank you very much for watching. And if you want to see more videos like this, uh, please hit the playlist on the next page. Check out the previous episode. And I will see you guys tomorrow for another episode. So thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. And until then, as always, take care.